Hey guys, Crypt the Lazy Geek here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna have fun with this filter here. This is the Altair 2 inch dual band 4 nanometer filter. So this is a dual band narband filter. There's many of those in this era of astrophotography, which is amazing. And if you're not familiar with those, they're basically filters that let you image emission nebulae like the North American nebula, the Pelican nebula, the uh, Eagle nebula, or many planetary nebulae as well uh, from light polluted areas such as here in Tokyo, which is a very light polluted area. And this particular filter, because it is a dual band filter, it lets in two colors of light very tightly. One is in the green blue kind of uh, spectrum. It, it lets in what we call oxygen three emissions. And the other one is in the deep red spectrum and it lets in uh, hydrogen alpha emissions. And those happen to be the main emissions by done by emission nebulae and planetary nebulae. And the filters come with specifications that are relevant to us. The main specification besides the wavelengths, the colors basically that lets through is the uh, bandpass uh, width basically here. And the smaller that number is, typically the better, because then the filter lets in much less light pollution while keeping in the target signal. And those filters, because they let in several uh, basically colors of light, green, blue, and red, they're perfect for one-shot color cameras, like the one that I have here, which is my Topetech uh, 571 sensor camera, uh, kind of like a cheap version of the ZWASI 2600MC. I'll put links, by the way, in the description if you're interested. Now, these days, among the dual-band filters available, the most popular ones are probably the Optolong uh, versions. You have the Optolong L-Extreme, which uh, passes the same colors of light as this one, but with a seven nanometer uh, band pass. So that's a bit wider than this, so a bit less good. But then you also have the Optolong L-Ultimate, which has a band pass width of three nanometers. And so in theory, better than that. And yet I prefer this to something like the Optolong L-Extreme, because I see it as uh, more polyvalent. You can use it in more scenarios than the Optolong L-Extreme, and I'll get to that in a moment. There's also another reason I've tested with a spectrophotometer quite a few Optolong filters from L-Extremes to L-Ultimates, and while many were on specs, there were quite a worrisome amounts that were not up to spec, where their band passes were misplaced compared to the target band pass. But Altair Astro, which is based in the UK, had good reputation, so I purchased that directly from them. Although full disclosure, in the end, there was a big miscommunication between them and me, and I ended up getting the filter for free but I don't think they had any clue that I was like Quiv the Lazy Geek. I, I, I went with my just normal full name. Um, so it's like, overall, I got it for free, but it's like kind of a, a miscommunication was the source between Altair Astro and myself. And there was no promise of video or anything like that because there was no discussion of my uh, role as a content creator for astrophotography. So just so you know, full disclosure here. Okay, so I've talked about like maybe some lottery slash quality issues that could be had with some Optolong filters. What other reason do I have to prefer this particular filter with four nanometer band pass compared to the on paper better three nanometer band passes? There's several reasons. One of them is something that I've touched upon quite a bit on the, on the channel is a phenomenon called the band pass shift. When you have very fast optics, like this telescope is roughly f3.6, uh, which is quite fast. I also have a hyperstar setup that's at f2. I will likely not use this with hyperstar because it's not uh, good for that. But f3.6 is already plenty fast. When that happens, there is a shift in the band pass that the filter lets through, which can cause all sorts of issues. And the tighter the band pass, like three nanometer, the worse the effects of that shift become. Effectively, if I were to use an Optolong L-Extreme on this uh, telescope, the outside range of my aperture would be letting in light pollution, but not letting in the target signal, which is obviously the worst thing possible. With this four nanometer filter, because it's slightly wider while still being really tight to reject light pollution, it's kind of like I see it really as a filter that I can use 
freely on this very fast system. And it's also a filter that can be used freely on very slow system as well. I mean, it's not something for Hyperstar or for Raza F2 systems, but it's definitely good for F3.5 and above. And it has another advantage is that because it's a four nanometer band pass, it will pass some nitrogen two spectrum. And nitrogen two is actually important for planetary nebulae. And so that's why I went with this filter and not the L ultimate, which is cheaper. So of course, before I even tested the filter in my telescope, I measured it with my spectrophotometer and it was absolutely 100% Perfect. It's actually become my reference filter to compare other filters against and to make sure that my spectrophotometer is well calibrated after I run calibration via, via various light sources. So it's amazing. It's perfectly up to spec. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, filter spec wise. Okay, so how does it perform? Well, I just took some exposures of M27, the Dumbbell Nebula, a planetary nebula, yesterday with this setup. Uh, it should be the whole night, actually. And uh, I'll be stacking those exposures and looking at the results together with you. Now, uh, I haven't taken my flat frames yet, so the filter is still in the filter drawer there. I don't want to show you the raw filter because then I would not be able to take flat frames anymore. So tonight, when the skies get darker, I will take flat frames and then I'll be able to calibrate everything and do the stacking and processing and show you those results so you can see how this filter performs on a target like M27 from the worst uh, possible scenario, which is imaging from Tokyo. So anyway, let's get to it. And we've done the flat frames, have done everything that's required to do the actual stacking and processing of M27, which I managed to capture across two nights, only two clear nights in a while, and uh, around seven hours and 20 minutes total of data because I messed up the Meridian flip. On the first night, I forgot to properly configure my computer for the AM5 kind of uh, Meridian, Meridian flip. If you're wondering about what I'm talking about, I have a video about uh, uh, that'll link above uh, about like how to configure Merid Meridian Flip for the uh, ZWAN5. Uh, anyway, I am in PixInsight and this is the result. I'm going to control click on the stretch and we can see that the filter seems to have performed really, really well. I've already mentioned that it was beautifully per spec, like ex perfectly on spec for the for the band passes of the filter so I'm not surprised to see a good result I'm also uh, very happy to see that there's very little gradient uh, mind you this was taken in Tokyo uh, so even in narrow band I expect to see more gradient but here we have a very slight kind of greenish to reddish type, type of gradient, which is perfectly fine and very, very easy to deal with. Also on some of the brightest stars, I mean, this isn't only tack, but I'm not seeing any halos there either. So uh, yeah, and all of those details for just seven of hours of data from Tokyo, we have the uh, lobes of the nebula, we have some of the nebulosity coming out of here. This is pretty decent. This is, uh, really, really decent, and uh, like this is not the filter, but the telescope itself, the cheap Newtonian, on an APS-C size sensor, is performing beautifully, like almost like perfect stars, all the way to the corners. And uh, that's a really, really good combination of equipment. It makes me want to to use that more and more and more. Uh, I've kind of become a pixel peeper by spending so much time optimizing my telescope. So, so this is one of the morals of the story. Do not spend time optimizing your star shapes, otherwise your star shapes will start controlling you. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, filter, like this is a good result. And let's go quickly through the processing steps uh, that I did for it. Uh, removing the stars, running a quick dynamic background extraction on the image to get like pretty much a perfectly flat background, uh, putting back uh, the stars. And also, I uh, probably at around there, I did some spectrophotometric color calibration. Uh, here we are, and now we have the natural colors after the spectrum, spectrophotometric color calibration. Again, this is from Tokyo. This is a pretty cool uh, image. And then some quick processing to uh, do some uh, star reduction with Blur Exterminator. I had some problems with Blur Exterminator. We have a, a new version of the process and it didn't give me good results at all. Uh, so I'm gonna test that out on my other computer that has the old version, but it's like, it was basically 
taking this lobe here and, and putting it completely dark. I don't, I don't know what happened there, uh, even with the old version of the AI. Uh, so I had to use Blur Exterminator with like correct only, but that's something else. Uh, and uh, then I did some Noise Exterminator, which is working as well as ever, uh, down sampling because I had drizzled the image, and then some cropping, some uh, stretching, uh, some HDR multi-scale transform, uh, playing with curves, saturation, putting back the stars, reducing the stars, and doing a final crop. And this is the final image on M27 with that Altair uh, 4 nanometer bandpass filter. How amazing is that? I love this. This is awesome. And uh, this is like, that's why I like this filter. I haven't been able to use it really up to now, but I did some other like quick tests, uh, not not worthy of stacking yet, but on some other like more wider uh, nebulae, and it's performing really really well. I think it's a great filter because it has like the band passes of four nanometers, which I feel are kind of like the sweet spot to have like good light pollution re uh, rejection while being usable on faster optics at the same time and including some N2 as well for planetary nebula. Not a lot, but still some, which is always good. And because at least my sample was perfectly on spec, it's, it's just like working as expected and we're not seeing really any halo on the brightest stars. I mean, what, what more can I ask for here? Um, so yeah, I'll put the link uh, in the description. Uh, I'll put some links to L Extreme, uh, L Ultimate as well, if you're into like cheaper uh, versions of narrowband filters. Uh, but the Altair Astro uh, filter is uh, impressing me quite a bit. Um, how much is it? So it is uh, 400 pounds. So or actually like the international price would be 332 pounds. And in US dollars, that that's 420, well, 430 US dollars uh, plus shipping. So this isn't uh, bad, especially for a high quality filter. At least mine was perfectly up to spec, which is not a given as we've learned. Plus I just discovered that they have also an S2 plus Oxygen 3 version of the filter if you want to do proper SHO with a one-shot color camera sensor. So this is actually really, really interesting. It makes me want to buy this and test this as well. <laughs> just to see how good it does but like and we have this is compared to the Optolong L Ultimate which on paper is better at least for slow focal lengths uh, focal ratios uh, for a lower price uh, but there is a bit of a lottery that happens at least in my experience measuring those filters and there's also the fact that it will work slightly less well on faster optics. Uh, this particular filter, I probably would not be using it uh, at optics faster than f3.5, which means it's perfect for those uh, high-speed Newtonian telescopes and of course for pretty much any refractor that you may have. But with that, what are your thoughts on this filter? Had you heard of it before? Um, and would you be considering it over one of the cheaper alternatives from Optolong, for instance? Be very interested in hearing your opinion. So let me know down below in the comments. You can also like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you hated it, and subscribe to the channel if you're new, in which case, welcome to the channel. Uh, if you want to support the channel and support my endeavors even more, you can join the channel as a member by clicking that join button there, or join even better join my Patreon link down in the description uh, where I have actually a video uncut of my quick processing of M27 from start to finish um, so you can see what, uh, what I'm doing and my thought process while doing it. With that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.